Good morning and welcome to This Week. We're now nine days into the partial government shutdown and seemingly no closer to a resolution. Nancy Pelosi, who's set to take over as House Speaker Thursday, has said her party will, quote, act swiftly to end the Trump shutdown when Congress returns. She insists Democrats will support funding for border security, but not a border wall. The president is digging in his heels. In a series of tweets, Trump made his demands clear. We build a wall or close the southern border. He's also threatening to cut off aid to three Central American countries where many of the recent migrants are fleeing violence and poverty. That influx of new migrants is real and growing. This month, nearly 25,000 children, a record, are expected to be apprehended at the southern border. And this week, the Trump administration came under renewed scrutiny after a second migrant child died while in U.S. custody. But as President Trump blames Democrats for the impasse over wall funding, what's really needed to address the humanitarian and security concerns at the border? To help us separate rhetoric from reality, we're joined this morning exclusively by Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleenan. Welcome to this week, Commissioner. And we're going to start with the sad news. You have now had two young migrant children from Guatemala die in CBP custody in the past three weeks. Eight-year-old Felipe Gomez Alonso died just last week and seven-year-old Jacqueline Kalmaquin earlier in December. What more have you learned about the circumstances of those deaths? Yeah, two deaths this month, just absolutely devastating for us on, on every level. It's been over a decade since we've had a child die anywhere in our processes. Uh, what I can tell you about these two cases, and I, I've looked at our operational reporting, uh, the initial investigative reporting, I looked at the, the father's statements and interviews, is that our agents did everything they could as soon as these children manifested symptoms of illness uh, to save their lives. Uh, Jacqueline was 94 miles away from the nearest Border Patrol station. She started to vomit on, on a bus ride to that station. Our agents got her there as quickly as they could where we had a paramedic waiting, an agent who's a paramedic, uh, to, to revive her and get her into emergency medical services and life flight her to a children's hospital in El Paso. In Felipe's case, it was actually a Border Patrol agent who noticed his symptoms and made the decision to take him and his father to the emergency room uh, where he, he had the treatment of doctors in Alamogordo, New Mexico. And, and what's being done to assure this doesn't happen again? So, first of all, and I think the lead-in was, was absolutely appropriate, the, the humanitarian crisis we're facing, that means there are 60,000 people crossing the border each month, each of the last three months. That's 30,000 families, 5,000 kids uh, per month. That means we're going to have 22,000 children come through our system, a system built for adults who are violators of the law. Uh, now they're coming into Border Patrol stations as, as young children. Uh, so that, that's a huge crisis. What, what we've done immediately, Secretary Nielsen and I have directed that we do medical checks of children, 17 and under, as they come into our process. That's not a capacity we've had in, in the past. We've, we've checked everyone we currently have in custody. We're working with ICE to make sure we can transfer them to a better situation for families and children as quickly as possible. Uh, but we're also trying to, to really change the system so that we have the capacity either with doctors, physicians' assistants, paramedics to do an initial intake check so that we know if, if a child is healthy as they arrive at the border and then make sure they can get medical care if they need it. Could more have be do been done to prepare for this? I know you have a surge. I know you say it's unprecedented with the number of children, but the Flores settlement, which says children have to be released after 20 days, has been in place since 1997. You had an influx, influx of minors in 2014. Couldn't you have mobilized for this possibility? Well, well, we have. Actually, within our current budget authority, I've already directed additional uh, spending on medical care and mental health care for children entering our custody. But why are we at a breaking point now, as Kirsten Nielsen says? It, it, the breaking point at the border is because of the volume. Now, you mentioned the Flores settlement. Uh, sure, it was 1997, but it was actually a 2015 case uh, then upheld by the Ninth Circuit in 2016 that started this dynamic of families being released and without any possibility of completing an immigration proceeding or repatriating those who didn't have a meritorious claim. So basically that sent a signal. If you arrive with a child, you'll be allowed to stay in the United States, and that's what we've seen continued growth month after month of people coming with children. And, and frankly, Felipe and Jacqueline's parents both said the same thing when they were interviewed about why they came now and what they thought would happen when they arrived at the border. Secretary Nielsen, DHS Secretary 
Secretary Nielsen said in a statement, she laid blame on smugglers, those who want open borders, and migrant parents who put their children at risk by taking the journey. President blamed the opposing party. Does the federal government bear any responsibility for these deaths? So I think this is a multifaceted problem that requires a multifaceted solution. You mentioned the legal framework. Uh, based on that floor settlement in the court decision, families are going to be released. So that's inviting families into this dangerous journey. We need a sober-minded, nonpartisan look at our immigration laws to, to really confront and grapple with the fact that children and families are coming into this cycle. That's first and foremost. We also need to invest in Central America. The State Department's announcement of an unprecedented increase in aid I think is a tremendous step forward. Uh, there are green shoots of progress uh, both on security and the economic uh, front in Central America. We need to foster that and help improve the opportunities to stay at home. We need to partner with Mexico. Uh, no question we need to work with the new administration of President Lopez Obrador and, and have a joint plan for dealing with migrants in the hands of transnational criminal organizations. Let, let me go back to, to Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala. You have traveled there. You talked about that aid package. If there wasn't aid going into there, if that aid was cut off, what would the result be? More problems? Well, I think that the need is for an accountable partner uh, on, on, the, on the part of the Guatemalan, Honduran, and El Salvadoran governments. Uh, wh when we work together with well-targeted programs and really targeting them at areas that are, we're seeing migration, like the Western Highlands of Guatemala, where there's a real poverty and hunger crisis. Uh, it's one of the most food insecure regions in the hemisphere, uh, huge rates of malnutrition. Uh, USAID, along with the USDA, have great programs there to try to foster that. But we need the government to step in uh, and join us in that effort. And, and I think with, with the Mexican government coming in now, also expressing investment and development in Central America as a priority, we've got a real opportunity to make a difference. I, I want to move to the wall, uh, the border wall. The southern border is nearly 2,000 miles long, but establish how much new border wall has been built since President Trump took office. So, and, and that's the fourth element of the strategy I was about to finish with, is, is we need investments on the border security side, in addition to the humanitarian needs that, that I already spoke to. Uh, the border wall, in FY17, uh, President Trump's first budget, we, we got about $300 million to, to uh, start building new wall for the first time in years. Uh, we built 35 out of those 40 miles already. Uh, that's, that's record time for a major government procurement of this nature. And we're already uh, on contract and launching construction for the FY18 fund fiscal year 18 funded priorities as well. I, I've been along that border and driven most of that border. There are areas where the wall is clearly ineffective. People are climbing over that wall. How much of that border do you think the wall that exists or the fencing that exists is ineffective? Right. So our, our wall system priorities are derived from our agents in the field. Uh, they, they offer the capabilities they need to achieve control of their sector, their, their air, area of responsibility. Uh, so we, we've asked for about 1,000 miles of wall in our top 17 priorities on the primary line. These are areas where we have a, a dense metropolitan area on both sides of the border where people can disappear quickly into a neighborhood in the U.S. side if we can't slow them down. Uh, and what we're talking about is not just a dumb barrier. We're talking about sensors, cameras, lighting, access roads for our agents, a system that helps us secure that area of the border. That's what we were asking Congress. So, so if, if, you got, if the administration got $5 billion for a wall, would you want part of that money to be spent for all these technologies that you're talking about? Absolutely. That's included in, in the ask of Congress. It's about 215 miles of wall system, which has all of those capabilities included in it. And, and I, I, you said you need this border security investment. There's a lot of congressmen I've talked to down there who say, look, you, you get the wall up there and a drone will just fly over. That's how they're delivering drugs and, and other illegal substances. Well, no one's asking for only a, a, a single focus on our border security investments. We've asked for But, but when you technology. look at a wall, can't that just be overtaken by a drone or some other method of getting through? When you're talking about 60,000 people flowing across the border, uh, and we're talking about drug smuggling increasing between ports of entry, hard narcotics, synthetic opioids, methamphetamine coming 25% increase the year, last year. We've seen it increase again the first three months of this year. We need a barrier to help us stop that, to push into the, the traffic into areas that we can control more effectively. And it's a multifaceted approach. Sure, we need counter drone technology too. We appreciate Congress giving the Secretary the authority to start exploring that. We, we need to attack all of the different vectors that could threaten And, and just quickly, you're, you're having a crisis now. You're said you're at a breaking point. 
you want money for a wall and other border security, but that's not going to happen quickly. So how do you deal with this? Well, we also need, need money to provide a better process, a different approach for families and children crossing. We're going to be in December, 65% of our crossings are family and, families and children. We don't want them in Border Patrol stations. We want them in a better scenario for these vulnerable populations that we're seeing. So that's an immediate thing that we can do much more quickly. The surveillance technology, we can deploy very fast. And it's not just for the between the ports. Our our ports of entry, these huge gateways for, for our economy, four trillion, uh, two, two billion a day on the southwest border. We need to be able to stop drugs coming through in vehicles and being carried by individuals crossing that border too, and we need technology to help us do that. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for explaining all this to us this Thank morning. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.